Welcome back to Internomics. I have a very interesting guest. I've been speaking with Sanjeev Sanyal, economist and member of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. Uh, Sanjeev, uh, uh, you spoke about how you have spearheaded process reforms. Now, one of the big reforms that we were expecting from this government uh, uh, and, you know, which was promised in a big way was privatization. Uh, it was expected that there will be only four units in every sector and the rest will be privatized. We haven't seen that much progress. IDBI is kind of progressing, still looking for uh, the uh, final touches before you find the buyer. On the other banks, we have not seen a move. Uh, anything you can update us on the next big reform? So first of all, um, process reforms are somewhat different from this. Privatization is not process reform. So let me explain what process reforms is and then I'll also talk about privatization. See, process reforms are different from structural reforms. In structural reforms, whether it's GST or uh, insolvency in bankruptcy code or privatization, you are basically changing the structure of whatever activity you're doing. Process reforms does not change the structure. You basically take the same thing that you're doing, that, that particular activity of the government, and make the process more efficient. So that is the reform agenda that I have been focusing on all this while. And I can talk, I've written extensively on it, uh, uh, so you can, you can look them up on YouTube or on, uh, on the newspapers. But as far as privatization is concerned, that is a structural reform in that you actually change the structure. You sell off that... Uh, Body or something. And there, uh, let me say that we have been systematically lowering the government's uh, shares, occasionally privatization, uh, pr privatizing as in the case of uh, Air India. But do remember that we don't see it as a source of income. Many people look at, you know, this is as some sort of a uh, income stream of the government. It's not. We basically believe in largely market-driven systems. And over time, we have found that uh, we have been able to increase the value of that asset before we sell it off. There are infinite number of assets more in the pipeline and not just you know companies, there's land monetization, there are many other things. And we have discovered that you know we can do it slowly and steadily rather than try to do it radically. Um, you know it's no, none of these companies are getting in the way in any way. Um, so you know IDBI over a period of time, we will lower in LIC our government share over a period of time. Um, you know the idea is to do it without causing any ripples in the system. Enough. Uh, we are waiting, of course, for further announcements in the financial sector and in other sectors as well. Uh, but uh, Sanjeev, let me come to this interesting paper you've written on states' performances uh, or relative performance of states. There are some very startling things that you point out that southern states didn't do anything really till 1991 and then... Uh, you see them like, you know, 2x or, uh, you know, 1.5x the per capita income of the country. And uh, West Bengal, which was far ahead, Punjab, which was very high uh, in terms of relative per capita income, uh, you know, nosedives after 1990. Any more interesting observations and lessons for policy making? Yes, absolutely. So this is a paper uh, for the readers that I did on looking at uh, relative performance of states since 1960 to the present. And there are some very stark things, as you pointed out. Southern India did uh, particularly well after 1991. So they are the real beneficiaries of the liberalization era, so to speak. Um, there's also Western India, by the way. Gujarat does particularly well in the post-liberalization phase. In fact, their success is even more recent. It's really after 2000 that they really get going. So there are parts of the country that do very well. Even in the north, there are some parts like Haryana that do quite well. On the other hand, you have a peculiar situation in eastern India. And really, you know, a lot of talk about north-south divide and so on. But the real divide in India is east versus the rest. Uh, West Bengal is a particularly poor performer, but even Bihar is done quite poorly. Bihar's per capita income, for example, is one-tenth of that of Sikkim or, Gujar or Goa. So, you know, it's really been a poor performer. Um, similarly, you have um, West Bengal, which has been, uh, which was one of the most industrialized states in the country in the beginning, but has really slowed down. So there are some big changes, uh, you know, which come through... Uh, uh, very clearly. And then there is, of course, this experiment of Punjab vis-a-vis uh, -vis Haryana. Um, so you have Punjab, 
which was which had the highest per capita income of any major uh, of any sizable state uh, till the 19 uh, uh, early 1980s and since then it has performed particularly badly so much so that haryana now has a per capita income which is 70% higher than that of punjab which is right next door fair point uh, actually uh, just a word more on uh, pan, uh, you know uh, west bengal west bengal as you point out is a maritime state you know a coastal state and all the coastal states uh, have done well uh, you know because of this uh, advantage west bengal also had the advantage of the first educational institution you know presidency college comes there first 1817 banaras hindu university comes 100 years later and uh, we still see west bengal losing what is the policy draw from this? Did they become socialist too early? Well, not too early. Just becoming socialist is bad for you. It doesn't matter when you do it. Um, I mean, I have lived in I lived in Kolkata in the 1970s and 80s when these policies came in place, and I'm afraid I am witness of the murder of Kolkata. How industrialists, industrial base of Kolkata was systematically destroyed. Uh, entrepreneurs were pushed out, and uh, it's a state that then drifted down to where it is now. Now, of course, uh, some uh, national level policies also hurt Eastern India. For example, you had the freight equalization rules, uh, which were there, which meant that the resources of Eastern India were sent uh, at equal freight to the rest of the country. So, you know, Southern India, Western India benefited from, say, for example, Jharkhand's uh, mines. Uh, when uh, it should have been Jharkhand and the neighboring states. So there were national level policies that did hurt uh, Eastern India. But Eastern India has to take uh, account of itself as well. I mean, these, for example, the freight equalization was removed in the 1990s. We've had 30 years since then. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you have uh, still not recovered. Uh, you had, for example, uh, you know, a gangster political... Uh, uh, sort of culture in uh, Bihar. Yeah. Uh, now, you can't say that you don't pay the price for having That's that. Right. Right. So I think local state level policies matter. If those policies are, uh, you know, uh, uh, unhelpful, mm -hmm. then I don't think anybody should complain that uh, uh, business activity, industry, etc. walks out. <laughs> Fair point. Uh, I guess uh, the southern states will have a lot to uh... Uh, to to uh, you know rejoice in what you're saying, but just a final question since we are out of time, uh, should Maharashtra go the other way? I mean, at the moment it looks like uh, you know it could be uh, in favour of the BJP itself, but if it were to go the other way, will that make a very big difference to policy making in the centre? Well, I can't comment on p politics. Uh, I'm a technocrat. Uh, all I can say is that. Um, uh, having policies that are unhelpful to business uh, are not going to be good for the economy. Okay. And, uh, you know, we have seen that in, in the specific case of uh, West Bengal. I'm personally witness of what happens when you have an environment which is uh, unfriendly to uh, industry and business in general. The entrepreneurs uh, decamp and leave. Mm. Uh, so I don't think uh, anybody should uh, have any... Uh, doubt in their mind that policies matter and if you have uh, policies that are unhelpful for growth uh, then you know you won't get growth <laughs> okay fair point uh, sanjeev said i will speak to you later thank you very much for spending so much time with us thank you okay well that's the word coming in from sanjeev sanyal not to worry too much about uh, the slowdown that we saw in the second quarter there is enough fiscal and monetary space uh, and uh, Trumponomics, not necessarily inimical to India. On that note, we wrap up on Indianomics. Thanks for watching.